for just a screencast. So you can watch the screen and see what's going on. Um, today, just a few minutes ago in class, uh, we discussed that it's a bad practice to hard code sensitive data in a program. So let's try to see that in action. Somewhere here, I have a little problem. Just a second. All right. So I have a problem which doesn't do much except printing hello world to the screen. Um, can you give me some uh, unique string so I could include it here? <laughs> okay. I once, uh, well, many years ago, I was running an experiment in a program and I was showing it to a student and I wrote unique 43D you know, just to have something that is not likely to be anywhere else. And uh, apparently they misunderstood the idea because they thought this only works <laughs> when the string is unique 43D. Oh so uh, since then, I usually use unique 43D as a, as a unique string. So I save this file. Then I do this to compile it it thought a little bit, then by default uh, the output is stored in a file called a.out. So if I do this, you can see it right there and it's executable. So I can run it and it says hello world unique 43d, right? Now I'm going to start Midnight Commander. I am going to open this file. Uh, okay, it has this uh, feature that doesn't show you the actual raw data. It tries to interpret it a little bit. So I'm going to do something else. I am going to open it in Mono. Okay, so now you see a lot of stuff here, right? And we called it earlier mysterious symbols. Incomprehensible symbols, yeah. Uh, let's see, do you know how to enable word wrapping in this editor? Because we could really use it right now. Well, I guess if we don't, let's try our friend G edit. Ah. And it's too smart to do that. Okay, let's try And this one is yet again too smart. Uh, okay. So Let's okay. okay, how do I enable word writing in this magical editor? Okay, let's search. How do I search? Unique 43D. There we go. So we found our string in human readable form. If it were a password, we'd see the password. And hello world should be somewhere next, you see? And it indeed is. The compiler put the strings in close, in adjacent memory areas. Um, okay, now how do I get out of here? There is an easier way, the tool called strings. 
you give it the file name and it prints out a list of human readable strings <laughs> that it managed to find in this binary. So in this case, we're looking at a nice filtered piece of uh, information. Instead of having zillions of lines of stuff that doesn't make sense, we see this stuff right here. Uh, on Windows, uh, there is a tool called you, I mentioned it in the past, System Terminals uh, Package, System Terminals, you can download it for free. It has a lot of interesting things. One of them is an utility called Strings, which does exactly the same thing that we just saw right here. So, uh, not only hard-coding passwords is bad, when you do this in an interpreted language such as Python, where when you read the source, you see human readable text. But it's also bad for compiled languages. If you open the file um, like this, you might have the false sense of security that my password isn't there, it's not readable. But uh, it is. You see right here. And you can make it even easier by using strings. So that's a lesson to learn. Um, another thing we did in class today uh, was a short demo of Notify Send. And some of you haven't seen it, and let's just do this again so we have a nice screencast where it's perfectly readable and viewable. So we have this tool, Notify Send, which tells the arguments you give it, for example, unique 43D. When I run it, pay attention to the upper right corner of the screen, I saw a tooltip with this message. Um, if you have some other program, for example, let's try it here. function called system which executes a command. So let me do this. Notify send test. When I press enter, in theory I will see the pop-up. And I do. So that's great. Now let's say um, command equals this. Notify send test. I'm now going to run it, and again, I see the same thing. So imagine that we have some uh, server application which receives, it's a chat program, which receives a message from a person we're interacting with over the network. It stores that message into a variable called command, just like you saw here. And then it uses os.system to visualize that message as a pop-up. And as we discussed in class, a sender can send us a command that contains more than we thought. So, for example, let me write echo hello. Now, if I run the program again, pay attention to the tooltip, it only says test. It didn't say test and, and echo hello. So, what happened with this part of the code? It was executed. So, perhaps we could write that to a file, for example, hello. Dot txt. We do this again. Then we go here. 
and we see the string. So the file was created. I am going to remove it. I am going to run it again. And you see that the file is created. So this thing is an action that was performed in my system that has affected its state. So if a sender sent me something like this, then it would actually delete my files. Yeah, be careful not to press enter. Let's say it's without fever, but I was dumb enough to run to be locked down as root. Many people do that. Unfortunately. Or fortunately for others who are always in search for materials for their botnets. So, what you have to do is you have to escape the whole message. Um, let's go back to this. So, command equals notify send percent s and then I give it the message that I actually received from the network, which will be uh, test echo hello to TMP new test dot txt. Now if I look at command, what do I see? It is a string, but inside this string the argument itself is quoted. So now if I do this, pay attention to the right hand corner, we see not just test but the whole string. So basically we ensured that this input that we received is handled as a string. We do not blindly pass it to bash or whatever um, my system happens to have. So we did not fall into the trap of taking um, sanitized, unverified input from an external source and running it without checking it first. And one of the first things people tell you when you ask them about examples of not verifying inputs are SQL injections. Where you receive a similar string where someone leverages the flexibility of SQL syntax in order to squeeze more stuff into that line than you normally expect them to. They could uh, drop your entire database. Or they could uh, give you a statement that always returns, let's say, the password of the account called admin written to the database. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later class, what, how to handle passwords, how to store them in a database, but that's for later. So for now, the lesson is to remember not to blindly execute whatever input you receive from a foreign source. As simple as that. And the last thing I want to show you now is uh, an extension of a discussion we've had many weeks ago about dev random and dev u random. Uh, what is the difference between these two files? You know. What other opinions do we have? Irina, now is the time for you to be on the video. You really wanted to be a part of this video, right? Okay, who else? Well, what does the U stand for? In your random? No, not user. Unbelievable? <laughs> no, it means unblocking. 
So the difference is that, uh, well, let's try it right here. I'm going to embiggen the font so you can read it better. So f equals open. In the first case, we go to get random. We open it in binary mode. And then we do this. Let's say we read 10 bytes from this file. It gave us 10 bytes. Let's read again. Again, 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 again. Every time I call it, it gives me 10 random bytes. So that's wonderful. Now let's try to do that in a loop. For i in range, let's say from 0 to 100. And let's read um, 20 bytes at a time. Actually, I should have done something else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Print i, then this. Oops. What's happening? Sort off. But let's give it a few more moments and see what happens next. So as I told you, uh, the operating system maintains a pool of uh, entropy from based on which it can extract and produce random data. When you read from dev random, it will give you nice uh, high entropy data for your randomized purposes. If you request more data than it has right now, it will block until it accumulates sufficient data to give you. So in this case, you see that it takes uh, quite a number of seconds for it to go to the next line and give me the next 20 bytes. This is the behavior we see for dev random. Now, before I do the same thing for dev year random, can you predict what's going to happen in the case of dev year random? So, first of all, it won't block, and second, it will return, it will either not return or return something else like 000, zero, zero for example. Okay, let me do that. I do this, then I do that. Open dev your random read binary. Ready? So, we run 100 iterations. And it keeps printing and printing and printing. So, what is the difference? Besides the fact that your random doesn't block. and then I will give you a mini challenge so you could find the answer yourselves. Uh, coming back to our previous conversation. So your operating system maintains a pool of um, entropy. So it has a source of randomness. When you say give me 50 random bytes, it takes the data from 
from here, let's say this is 50 bytes, it takes those 50 bytes, it gives them to you, you use them. Then you say, give me another 20 bytes, so it takes 20 more bytes, it gives them to you. So when you keep asking, like we did in a loop when we were reading from the random, we eventually depleted all that pool which it has prepared for us. And we had to wait a little bit until it could produce more uh, high quality random data. In the case of DFU random, when it, so at first it gave us the nice random data that it had, and when it ran out of random data, it began giving us something else which is not high quality random data, but it's better than nothing. So in the, ca in the case of you random, you rely on that when you need, when you, when you don't want this thing to block. And in other cases, when you are ready to sacrifice speed, so you're ready to wait, but you want the guarantee that you receive nice, beautiful, random data, in that case, you rely on dev random. So, uh, there is a tool called uh, Die Harder, which is used for um, measuring the quality of the implementation of a random number generator, or a pseudo random number generator. If you look at its manual, somewhere in the end we have a bunch of examples. Uh, okay, so there is a way to make it um, test data that it gets from the file. It could be dev your random, it could be dev random, or it could be some file you want. Uh, so your challenge will be to first of all learn how to use die harder. It's not part of the standard distribution, you have to install it separately, but it's in the repository, at least in the case of Debian. So your mission will be to produce uh, a file with random data, let's say uh, 500 kilobytes of random data which you obtained from Jeff Random, and then the same amount from dev u random and then you run this test against file A and file B see what the differences are then explain your findings in the report um, so that's what I wanted to show you in this demo sometimes you need blocking sometimes non-blocking is a better choice uh, the mini assignment for today has several uh, components. Basically, we have to replicate what I just showed you. Um, show me, uh, demonstrate how Jeff random blocks. Then you have to show me how you extract hard coded hard coded string from from a binary. You don't have to produce that binary yourself, you can just choose any file. Show me those strings. And um, You have to craft a clever string that can be used for an unsafely used notify fund. So, um, in my example, I crafted a string that created an arbitrary file in an arbitrary place on the target uh, file system of the victim. So you have to show me how you make a string that uh, creates a new user account on the system 
for example. Or you can come up with anything you think is a cool thing to have. So uh, what are your questions? I could go back to my terminal here and maybe show you more examples. Or Well, I could show you the last examples. I could unshow you some of the examples I've already shown. <laughs> so you have three mini assignments, and then there's an assignment for for this lab today, which I will uh, discuss once we're done recording. Uh, if you have no questions. We stop and then you welcome the new assignments. Okay?